Hey everybody, uh, back with another toffee today. We're under quadratic equations, which some of us did last year, but we're going to push it a bit more for higher. Again, higher tier only, the foundation, don't worry about it. We'll come in and we'll practice, practice, practice. What's involved in quadratic equations? Well, there are four aspects to it that I'm going to take you through today. It might be a bit of a longer video, but you got a shorty last week, so let's see how we go. We have got factorising quadratic equations, which I've done. Solving quadratic equations, which an awful lot of you have done, however, they get a wee bit harder. There's an one extra bit of uh, difficulty that comes into it. We've also to do a thing called completing the square, and we've also got to do using the quadratic formula. So, I should say that the, the PowerPoint today has been done by one of the guys that does most great uh, PowerPoints on TES, uh, called Daniel Burke, and yeah, it's pretty good. So. Let's see how we go. Okay, so we've got an expression like here, and this is called a quadratic expression. And a quadratic expression is one that has not just an x term, but an x squared term. Now, in some cases you'll find that the x term is actually zero, but we'll come on to those in a while. But you're going to have an x term, x squared term, an x term, and a number. And we want to get it in the form where uh, we get them in two brackets side by side that you might have seen. So we've got an x squared term, We've got a plus 6x and an 8. And the 6 and the 8 are important because when we're working it out, we are looking, this informs us to what all of the numbers be. So if it's x squared at the start, so it's going to be x and x. And we're looking, in this case, for two numbers whose sum is 6 as product is 8. So what two numbers have a product of 8 and sum of 6? So product means multiply together. What two numbers multiply together to give you 8? What two numbers add together to give you 6? Well, it's easier to work out the numbers that, are, that will multiply together to give you 8. Because there's only four of them. 8 and 1, 4 and 2. Um, or, yeah, plus 8, sorry. Or minus 1, minus 8, minus 2 and minus 4. Right? But the only two that add together out of those two bits to give you plus 6 is plus 2 and plus 4. And there we go. 2 and 4, 4 and 2. So we get x plus 4 and x plus 2 as our answer. If I look at the next ones, here's 3 to try. If you know what you're doing, happy days. But we've got two numbers that multiply together to give us 15 and add together to give us 8. Well, the factors of 15 are 15 and 1. 3 and 5, and sure enough, 3 and 5 are the ones that we get x plus 5 and x plus 3. Okay, what about next one? Two numbers that multiply together to give you minus 21, and that we add together to give you plus 4. Now you can list them out, so they've got a product of minus 21 and a sum of plus 4. Now what you notice, if you've got a product, a minus product, one of the numbers is going to be positive and one's going to be negative. Right? So you're probably thinking, God, I don't know, I'll need to listen out. But the only factors there are of 21 are 7 and 3 and 21 and 1. And the only way we can get plus 4 from those arrangement of numbers is to have a plus 7 and a minus 3. And if you have plus 7, minus 3, it gives you plus 4. If you multiply them together, you get minus 21. And last but not least, two numbers that multiply together to give you plus 24 and add together to give you minus 10. It's quite unusual. In this case, we've got two, a positive for a product and our sum is negative. Well, in that case, usually, these two numbers, well, they're always, these two numbers are both going to be negative. And the, or sorry, both going to be negative, so that when they add together, they add together to give a negative number. And if I show you that the answer is minus 6 and plus, minus 4, minus 6 and minus 4 are like so. If I multiply those together, I get plus 24. If I add them together, I get minus 10. Minus 6 plus minus 4 is minus 10. And that's how we factorize quadratics. Here's some for you to try. The bottom one will probably give you a few kittens. And don't worry about if you can't do the bottom one, because we're going to do it in a little second. These are the answers. And if you notice the bottom one, the bottom one is x plus 8 and x minus 8. It's kind of similar, but it's what's called the difference of two squares. Voila. So when, what happens when we get x plus 8 and x minus 8? Well, 
When we multiply our brackets, x times x gives me x squared. 8 times minus 8 gives me minus 64. The two inner bits give me plus 8x, and the two outer bits give me minus 8x. There, there. If I add all those together and group my terms together and group my x's, the x term will disappear and you get x squared minus 64. And it's just one of those things that you'll have to recognize. If you've got a quadratic with an x squared term and a number, it means that we've got the difference of the two squares. So this will always be a square number. Or something that we can find the square root of. And it will be plus and minus whatever the square root of that number is. So, I have x squared minus 81. 81 is a square number. It's 9 squared gives me 81. So you're going to have just simply... Whoa. x minus 9, x plus 9. x minus 10, x plus 10. And in some ways, if you recognize it, it's kind of the easiest question in the world. What if we do something like this? 101 squared minus 99 squared? Well, again, you can apply the same thing to it. There's no x in it. But you could do 101 plus 109 and 101 minus 109. That's uh, 200 times 2, which is 400. No, you didn't. It might be a case of... They might give you that on an uncalculated exam, that question. Towards the end, certainly, uh, was one of the harder questions. But they're asking you to use your knowledge of the difference of two squares to help solve that. So it's where you've got one term squared and another term squared there. And you get the answer. Similarly with this, again, quite hard. But 49 is 7 squared. And the square root of x minus 3 all squared is just x minus 3. So you have 7 plus x minus 3 and 7 minus x minus 3. If I group those together, the x minus 3 plus 7 gives me x plus 4. Then I have 10 minus x for that one. Maybe it doesn't look that easy, but you might get there one day. It was very hard, but I thought I'd throw them in, so at least you have them in your notes for if they ever come up later on. Uh, try these. They're in the similar vein. Pause, and the answer is as follows. Okay, so what happens if we'll have an example like this that we're multiplying it? In all the examples that we've done beforehand, we've had x and x as our first two terms. Right? But in this case, we don't. So if we multiply our front two together, we would get 12x squared. Our last two would be minus 6. Our inner would be minus 8x, and our outer would be plus 9. A bit like. So, and when I group those together, the only two terms that can group together, as before, are the x terms. So minus 8x plus 9x will give me plus 1x. And that would be the answer. Hmm, says you. What if we have to go in reverse? Right. The version I'm going to show you, I'm only going to show you one to see if you can grasp it. If not, I'll show you another version of class on Tuesday if it's really not sinking in. Um, you can use the same principle as beforehand but fudge the numbers a little bit. But this, the fact that it's 2x squared at the front here changes an awful lot of things. The sum of our two numbers is still 11. But when we're working out a product, we'll multiply this product by this number that's at the start here. And you'll see why in a second. We'll do the 2 times the 15 to give you 30. So two numbers that add together to give 11 and that multiply together to give it 30. Well, in this case, still reasonably straightforward. Those numbers are 6 and 5. But we would write it as such. 2x squared plus 6x plus 5x plus 15. Okay, And you want to group them as such so that I can factorize each of these expressions. If I look at the first two bits together and put a little line down them, then I can take the 2x out of that, give x plus 3, and I can take a 5 out of that and get x plus 3 again. That gives me, if I group those together, that. If you take the x plus 3 out as a factor of both of those, you're just left with 2x plus 5. Did you get it? I'll show you another one. thought so. 5x squared minus 33x minus 14. Again, two numbers that are going to add together to give you minus 33 but that you're going to multiply together, not to give you minus 14, but minus 14 times the 5, which is minus 70. God, again, it's always easier to think the numbers multiply together to give you minus 70. In this case, 
you're going to have a minus 35 and a plus 2. And we can group them as such. Group the 5 with a 35, etc. And factorise. Take 5x out as a factor, left with x minus 7. Take the 2 out as a factor, and you get 2 upon x minus 7. Take the x minus 7 as a factor of both, and you're left with that. And you can see the 5x plus 2 comes with the 5x plus 2 there. Easy peasy. Eek. You did want to do higher. I will, I will tell you that. What about this one? 6x squared minus 11x plus 3. Two numbers that multiply together to give you 3. Or no, sorry, the add together to give you minus 11. And that multiply together to give you not 3, but 6 times 3, which is 18. Hmm. Think, think, think. You got it? You got it? 9 and 2. So minus 9 and minus 2. It'll give it. And if you are struggling with this factorising bit, which I'm sure you will because if it's the first time being introduced to you, uh, what what it'll get you to do is list out all the factors of 18, both plus and minus. And once you get in the way of listing out the factors that there are for it, you'll soon fall into a rhythm and a, and a routine of how to do these. Um, but again, group them as such. We're going to split it up. And we've got, take our 3x out as a factor, get 2x minus 3, take our minus 1 out as a factor, get it like that, and away you go. Group those together, you're going to get 3x minus 1 upon 2x minus 3. And these are certainly an awful lot harder than last year, and there's a good reason why we didn't do them in Nightcats. So here are some for you to try. Difficult, every single one of them. You can pause, and the answers are as follows. Okay. Well, pretty glad you still got that right, but eek, if you didn't. Um, well, eek's not probably the right word. I can show you an alternative method for doing it if you don't like that method. And to be perfectly honest, it's one of those things that even if once you get to know how you're doing it, you'll probably, you know, devise your own routine and method for getting into it. Uh, it's certainly a very field thing of getting the product of the sum of two numbers and trying to figure out what that is. And you do need good mental maths to do it. What about solving quadratics? Well, there's several ways to solve them. Factorising that we've just seen, so we'll be using that. Graphically, which we'll do further on uh, after Christmas. Complete the square, which we'll do after this bit here. And also the quadratic formula, which we're going to do today as well. Factorising method it's very much like the same. So when using the factorising method to solve a quadratic equation, the equation must always equal zero. Very, very important. If it doesn't equal zero, you can't do your factors that we did before. If it doesn't, you've got to rearrange the equation to make it equal to zero. So all the terms over to the left-hand side, if that's the case be. And you'll see this quite a lot when uh, we do past papers. Okay. So when solving a quadratic, you can two, you can have two. 1, 2, or no values for x. This is because the curve of a quadratic graph can cross the x-axis where y goes north. 2, 1, or no places. That doesn't make any sense until I show you a graph, right? So the x-axis is long here, right? We're looking at where y equals 0. At y equals 0 is the line, this x-axis, which you can, if you didn't do last year, take my word for it, this is what it looks like. So this would have two possible solutions. So the graph cuts that line twice, and we would have a value there and there. If it only touched it once, it would look something like this. Right? If it only touched it once, you'd have one solution. Uh, and, of course, if it didn't actually get that down that far, then it would have no solutions. And that's graphically what it looks like. And that's why I'm going to leave that till after Christmas. We will look at the, um, the methods for doing that. If we solve, go back to our factorising one. We've got something like this. We can put this into our lovely paired brackets. So, two numbers that have a product of 24 and a sum of 10, 6 and 4. So if I factorise that, I'm going to have x plus 6 and x plus 4 equals 0. Since the two brackets multiplied together equal 0, at least one market must be equal to 0. So either x plus 6 is equal to 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. And if we arrange our equations, we get x equals minus 6 and x equals minus 4. 
taking her plus 4 over the other side, making it a minus, taking her plus 6 over the other side, making it a minus. Alright, so it's doing the same thing as before, and then you take your two brackets and put them equal to 0. What about this one? Two numbers multiply together to give you 25, and that add together to give you minus 10. Well, they're both minus 5. And if you notice, both bits are going to give you the same answer. So you're going to get x equals 5. And from the graph before, we kind of know what that graph's going to look like. It's going to curve and hit the thing at 5, x equals 5. Solve the following quadratic equations. Good luck. And I've left some at the end, keep an eye out, that aren't equal to 0. So we're going to have to rearrange these so that they are equal to 0. I'm devious. What can I say? All right. Okay. The answers are as follows. And again, you can pause it if you need to. All right. So done exactly the same way when you have your number in front of your x squared term. So this the harder ones indeed. The 2x squared plus 13x plus 15. That solves down to give you 2x plus 3, x plus 5. If you want to know why, skip back in the video a couple of minutes, right? But you would have 2x minus plus 3 equals naught, or x plus 5 equals naught. If I rearrange those equations to give me a value for x, I would get x equals minus 3 over 2, or minus 1.5 and x equals minus 5. x squared minus 16x equals 0 can give people some problems. You're looking to see your pair brackets, but as you notice, you have no number term here over the right. If I had asked to do, yes, you to do this last week, all you would have done, you would have looked at that expression and taken x out as a factor. So you'd have had something like x upon x minus 16 equals 0. And you'd have two solutions for that. You'd have x equals 0, or x minus 16 equals not making x equals 16. That one, like I said, that can cause people some problems because it gets so in the way of practicing the other type that they forget about the stuff that they could already do beforehand, if you know what I mean, and just factorizing. That's why we did factorizing as a topic before we did this. Similarly, 4x squared minus 21 equals not. 4x squared equals 21. x squared equals 21 over 4. Right? Spot on a thing yet? Square root of 21 over 4. Right, now. Again, for those that did NICAS last year, square root of a number can be both positive and negative. And we know that the square root of 21 isn't a round square number, so we'll leave it like that. But square root of 4 is 2. And we can do it like that now. Again, if you don't get that yet, it'll make sense by the end of the year. Especially when we come to do surds. Um, but I thought I would put it in here. So when it comes to it later on in the year, you'll have it to look back on. Alright. 4 squared equals 21. You can't take anything out as a factor of both. Because 20, 4 doesn't go into 21. And there's no common factors. And there's no x terms of both. So we'll put them equal to each other. And then we will solve down till we get there. So there's some to do below. Um... If you really want to, you can have a look at uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? But I would suggest you leave those for class, to be perfectly honest, because I shall give you a little more help. They're there to challenge you and see if you really understand what's going on. But without uh, supported learning from me or within peer learning amongst yourselves, I'm not sure if you can. Probably the one that you find the easiest might be 11 and 12, possibly. 10. Mm, I don't know. We'll see how you get on. I don't want to put any levels on it, but we'll see how it goes. Your answers are as follows. Completing the square. Thankfully, this is a good deal easier than what we've just done. Completing the square is another method to solve a quadratic equation. So, answers when completing the square are usually given to a specified number of decimal places or left in cert form. And I haven't done cert form yet, but again, I'll put it in so when we do do it, I said do do, we'll be able to come back and look at this again. So, if I have just two generic brackets together, x plus a, and a just represents a number, could be x plus 3, 
what you would do is square the x, square the a, so you'd have x squared, a squared, and then you do two times whatever the other one's in. And if you put them side by side, you'll see it, see that's what comes comes to you. You would get something in this form. Okay. This can be a rearrangement to give you something like this. All right? X squared plus two ax is equal this. That comes over the other side to look like that. All right? This is the principle of completing the square. Easier seen with numbers. We're going to rewrite the expression that in that form that we've just seen. Okay? So remember that that equals that. So we'd, we'd take our x value, we'll half it, and that'll give us our first bracket. So we get x plus 3 instead of x plus 6 squared. And then we take that 3 and take away that squared. Right? And if you multiply that out, that gives you that. So that x squared plus x 6x becomes that. And we've just adjust it by putting the plus 5. Right? We've minus 9 plus 5 which will give us minus 4. And that's the solutions for that. We've got to rewrite that expression in the form like that. So we take the first part, x minus 20x, x squared minus 20x, give us x minus 10, all squared, minus, and it says 100 there, but it probably should say minus 10 squared first, but it is 100. If we're going to do that for the minus 11, put our minus 11 on the end, and it'll tidy up to give us x minus 10, all squared, minus 111. Okay, and here's some for you to try yourself. Uh, giving you a couple of simple ones to start off with, moving on to the end. And if you want something to really want to do, but I would leave it for class again, like I say. Solve these quadratic equations using the method of completing the square. Give your answer to two decimal places. There and there. Okay. We're nearly there. These are the answers, sorry, by the way. Sad face. And like I say, like it says up there, complete the squares, the stuff that's supposed to be A and above. Right. This is how we do solve complete the square. So if I complete the square of this, I'm going to be x plus 12 will be in my square brackets. And then we're going to have minus 12 squared, which is 144. And then minus the 6 in the end. Group that together, I get x plus 12 all squared, minus 150 equals naught. If I rearrange that, I get that equal to that. If I want to get x plus 12 on its own, I square root both sides. So square root of that is just going to give me x plus 12. And a square root of 150. Remember that it gives both a positive and negative solution, which we'll come on to again when we do the quadratic formula. We solve the equation as normal. So we're going to have x equals minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 150. right? And that's how we get our answers to the last one, right, to give us 0 0.25 or minus 24.25, but this is the basis for the quadratic formula. Right. Thankfully for you, oh, these are some more to try, sorry. I know a couple of examples. I'll just click through them, because they're the same as before. You can try them to your heart's content. Okay, so this is the basis for the quadratic formula, is what I'm going to say. Another alternative to solving quadratic equations, which don't factorize easily, is to use the quadratic formula. Now, in actual fact, you could do this for every single quadratic formula one question that you get. Now, it's a bit long-winded and a bit fernickety, but the quadratic formula is for equations in the form x squared plus bx plus c. So, some number multiplied by x squared plus bx plus c, which is kind of all of them. And we use this formula. So x equals minus b. So your value of b is a minus b plus or minus the square root of this number squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. Good news is that formula is in the front of the test in uh, AQA. You might forget it by the time you do it, but it's going to be there. It's given to you in the formula book. So this is the original equation. So to give your answer correct to two decimal places. So we've got to identify the a, b, and c first. So the a is the number that's with the x squared, the b is with the number the x, and the c is with the last. I'm going to substitute that into your formula. So where minus b is minus 15, plus or minus the square root 
b squared, which is 15 squared, minus 4 times 9 times 5. Be careful when this you're doing this bit because it's the minus 4 multiplied by both these numbers. So I would do these two first. 9 fives are 45, and then do minus 4 to make sure you get your sign right. Okay, All divided by 2a, which is 2 times 9. If I multiply the couple of bits that I have, well, the 15 squared is 225, take away 180, divided by 18. The 225 take away 180 gives me square root of 45. And I pop those values into my calculator and I'll get minus 0 0.46 and minus 0 0.1, minus 1.21. Right. Again, A is 3, B is 8, C is 2. Put in the minus B to start off with, so minus 8 plus or minus square root of 8 squared, minus 4 times A, which is 3, and C, which is 2, divided by that. We'll solve down to give you that, and subsequently no, minus 0 0.28 and minus 2.39. Another example for you, and I'll finish off by giving you another couple to try. There's lots of examples there, and there you go. You want to pause, and the answer is again A and A star questions are like this. Now you're probably thinking at the moment O M G, right? They are hard, no doubt. Some of the hard, so the harder examples. Sorry, that I'm taking through. Complete, complete the score one won't cause you too much problems after a while. Quadratic formula might. But as long as you're good substitution skills and you know what ABC is, you'll be fine. The harder form of the uh, quadratic equation shall probably be fine as well. This isn't the ho as hard as these get, unfortunately. They get put into weird situations, if you know what I mean, for the last couple of questions. And I'm going to take you through all of those. Um, definitely one of the harder parts of the course. I think certainly the hardest we've come up to yet with possibly the exception of condition probability, which some people find very, very tricky. But um, we are just going to practice quadratic equations like crazy. Get into your groups, do it with somebody else so you can bounce the back and forward off. You get a bit, somebody else gets another bit, put it together and see how you go. You'll not get away with being able to not, not watch the videos for, for, a, for a wee while. Um, but it's very, very doable. And in fact, many ways, I find quadratic equations one of the, the most rewarding parts of, of the entire uh, course. Um, because they're very systematic and very fluid after a while, it's very, very hard to know the steps in which to do it. But after a while, you just feel it. If you practice it, you feel it, and you kind of do it in your sleep. And I can do quadratic equations in my sleep. I may have done five, ten thousand 10,000 quadratic equations in, in my lifetime. And that's a lot. So... Good luck with it. Send me an email. If you've got questions, please. I want to go back to this thing of you not just understanding everything that you that we're doing in the videos the first time. Bring the questions into class. If I need to make a second video for next week, I will. And I'll handwrite the solutions uh, as we're going along. Okay. Good luck. I'll see you next time. And enjoy the music. Bye. I walked across an empty land. I know the pathway like the back of my hand I felt the earth beneath my feet Sat by the river and it made me complete Oh, sympathy, where have you gone? I'm getting old and I need something to rely on So tell me where Tired and I need somewhere to begin I came across a fallen tree I felt the branches of it looking at me Is this the place we used to love? Is this the place that I've been dreaming of? A oh, simple thing, where have you gone? Getting old and I need something to rely on So tell me when you're gonna let me in I'm getting tired
tired and I need somewhere to begin And if you have a minute, why don't we go Talk about it somewhere only we know This could be the end of everything So why don't we go somewhere only we know Something to rely on So tell me when You're gonna let me in I'm getting tired And I need somewhere to begin And if you have a minute Why don't we go Talk about it somewhere Only we know This could be the end of everything So I don't What up guys, it's Kurt, and that was Max and Liz Gilly singing Somewhere Only We Know by Keen. I'll put the links to all Max and Liz's Facebook, Twitter down there, so go check them out if you do not know them already. And uh, as always, there's more stuff coming soon, so I will talk to you guys then. <laughs>